the hardest thing to do now is to teach the word of God. It's so difficult. So difficult. We are brothers. We are kingdom functionaries and we have a relationship that is deeper than media. It's deeper than media. Some of us, some of you saw my my bachelor's night and you saw that most of the young people God is doing because of my heart so I believe we are one. We all gathered together, we prayed and flowed so that at least our own generation will pass the test of unity and oneness. That was my body and it's still part of my major body. So when we correct error, we are not attacking people. I don't attack people. You know, there's a move of a move in the body of Christ now where everybody wants to attack somebody and they think it is boldness to call somebody's name and to attack him. And when you talk, they quote scripture. See, I will do a teaching on that someday, but not now. But you see, most of these things are wrong. You can attack what is wrong, but you don't have the, the clearance to attack somebody. Because that person might even be wrong when you are talking. What if the person repents? So you have shut the door of the body of Christ to that person. Whereas all of us at some point were involved in something that was not of God. Some of us were liars, some of us were manipulators, some of us were fornicators, some of us, we had many things. God picked all of us from different daughters. And so, attack what is wrong. Let your people know the difference between good and evil and let them choose good. But leave the people. When you talk, they start quoting scripture. Go and read the New Testament. Every time the apostles attack people, the people came to their congregation. In Acts chapter 8, when the guy attacked the sorcerer, he didn't just come and started preaching and said, there's one sorcerer in Samaria. The sorcerer came into their meeting and he demonstrated his calmness before Peter. That was when Peter attacked him. In Acts chapter 13, when Paul attacked by Jesus, he came into his meeting. He was preaching to the proconsul and he was trying to interfere. That was when Paul attacked him and called him son of Satan that he would be blind for a season. Go and check. In Acts 16, when Paul attacked the young lady that was a diviner, she came to Paul's meeting. She was following Paul up and down. These are the men of God. Listen to them. That was when Paul attacked him. When Jesus told Peter, get thee behind me, he was in his congregation. You can't rise up and go and start attacking somebody in another church. Oh God, you are not Jesus Christ. Most of these things are caused from pride. And God may have called some people to do it, but they, they, in order not to tear the body of Christ, let's attack what is wrong and leave people alone. Because what we do now is that if somebody is your enemy, you want to force every other person that is close to you to make them their, your enemy. If God even tells you that this person is fake, he has not told me, sir. Thank God for your spirituality, but I will not tag somebody fake because God told you. Now, for the purpose of order, if you are under an authority, and that authority picks from God that this person is fake, if you are under that authority, you must align. Because if you don't align, it means you are walking in disorder. And even though you align, it doesn't give you the clearance to attack the person. The Bible said, if a man is standing or falling, he said, leave him. Let his master judge him. Jesus is the judge. And then if somebody is not in your congregation, leave him, let him hear God at his own pace. Because what the body of Christ is doing now is they've divided the body into different camps. As I'm talking to you now, there are people that believe I'm fake. And because they believe I am fake, and their man of God said I'm fake, everybody that is close to that man of God, if he as much as mentions my name, is finished. If they won't wait, the Holy Ghost didn't tell them. Who. And the other pastors who have other ministries, because they are affiliated to that man, they will make, they will tag me fake for the next 40 years. They will never hear the Holy Ghost about it. And so you find suspicion taking the place of discernment. And people are not growing because they don't give room for love. Even if you are attacking an issue, let it be. For example, I, I speak against people who take money for ministry. It doesn't mean I will come here and call this music minister, call this one and say they are wrong. No, that's not my place. But in order for those who hear me not to drift into error, I can come here and say taking money for ministration is wrong. And in the same vein, if you invite somebody and you don't honor the person, it's wrong. Because there are many pastors now who invite music ministers and because they say don't take money, when they finish ministry, they say thank you. That's camp. That one too is wrong. But I won't come now and say this minister collected, in fact, I don't know anyone in particular who collect money. I just know that's what's happening. And when it comes to my table, I tell you don't call anybody's name for me. So that when I preach it, I will preach it with the intensity of the Holy Ghost and I will say it as I'm led. Not having anybody in mind. So you can address an issue that is wrong, but leave people. And if God gave you the authority to do it, that's fine. That is between you and Jesus. It is also not in my place or in our place to come and say, who should do what Jesus told him? If Jesus has commanded you...